In last week's video, I talked about the idea that I had to change my 24 to 70 G Master for a 24 to 50 G lens from Sony, the new lens that is just out. I've linked that video just above if you'd like to go back and have a look at it. But basically, I looked into the metadata history that is stored in Lightroom to see what kind of focal lengths I favoured the most and have used the most over the last two or three years. And I determined that uh, I tended to shoot a lot at 24 millimeters from that particular lens. And therefore, the 24 to 50 may suit me quite well. And as it happens, the new lens arrived by post the next day from when I published last week's video. So I've had four or five days to check it out and see what my experience of it is. And I'm going to share that experience with you now and let you know what my initial first impressions of it are. This is not an exhaustive review of the lens. I'm not going to be going deeply into the optical properties of it or anything like that. If you want that, you're best watching another video like something from Gerald Undone or from Gordon Lang. But I'm going to tell you just what my initial feel for the lens is as I was using it over a few days. The first and most obvious thing and the reason that I decided that I would switch from the 24 to 70 to the 24 to 50 is that it is very much smaller and lighter. And I enjoy doing some street photography, city photography, landscape photography, those sorts of things. And carrying the big lens around with me was pretty arduous. If you're carrying it for a full day, it's a heavy lens. But the 24 to 50, as you can see that's on the camera just now, is really quite small and compact. And it's a lot lighter than the 24 to 70. As you can see, it weighs in at just 1.18 kilograms and that is with the camera attached that's in this case the camera is a Sony A1 and that compares with almost 1.7 kilograms for the camera with the 24 to 70 and so the size and the weight make a massive difference to actually using the camera in practice I took the camera out in London to do a bit of street photography and a little bit of cityscape photography, see how well I get on with the camera in practice. One thing to note is that the extension of the zoom tends to work in the opposite way from what you may expect. Normally, the lens extends at the telephoto end of the zoom range, but for this lens, it extends at the wide end of the zoom range. But to me, that wasn't any kind of problem and I got used to it very quickly. The camera feels great in the hand. The balance is really good. It's much easier to handhold for a long period of time than the A1 is with the 24 to 70. I'd be quite happy carrying this camera around one handed for quite long periods of time without worrying about getting any risk fatigue. For street photography, I often shoot with the LCD screen flipped up so that I can shoot from waist height and the camera felt very comfortable in this position. Optically, I find the lens to be absolutely excellent. I understand that in terms of performance, it's somewhere between the 24 to 70 Mark I and the 24 to 70 Mark II. And since I had the Mark I version of that lens, I'm going to get an improvement by using the 24 to 50 version. So I used the pixel shift mode on the Sony A1 to do a 16 image pixel shift shot here of Tower Bridge in London. And so if I click on this, we can zoom in basically on a 200 megapixel image. It takes a moment to load it. But as soon as it's loaded, you can see that the image is pin sharp. Any little defects, I think, are largely due to the uh, pixel shift effect. I, I stabilized the camera on London Bridge and shot towards Tower Bridge. But it's well known that London Bridge moves a little bit. When a heavy truck or a bus passes over, you get a little bit of vibration. So it's not absolutely perfect for doing this 200 megapixel pixel shift process. But you can see just how far we were able to zoom in. So therefore, you know, even using the 24 millimeter lens, if you have the opportunity to make that kind of shot, you can really get something that is spectacularly zoomed in. And there we have a zoom in on HMS Belfast.
Using the lens for some normal shots, I, I find that it worked really well. You don't really have any issues with it whatsoever. One thing to note is that the lens does have a fair degree of barrel distortion. And if I just hold down the backslash key in Lightroom, you can see the uncorrected version of this. And you can see that these vertical lines are bowed out slightly. Now, normally that would be corrected in the in the panel for lens corrections. But if you look into this panel and you click on the profile and you look for the Sony lens correction for this one, you'll find that it's not an option. You get the um, 24 GM, the 24 2.8 G, you get various 24 to 70s, 24 to 105, but there is no 24 to 50 as yet. I assume that within a few days we'll be getting an update to Lightroom and the profile for this lens will be in place. But for the moment, I just made the correction manually and adjusted for the barrel distortion. So no problem with that really. And once the lens profile is in place, you won't even notice it. So I wouldn't count that against it. Now, the next thing to say is that 24 millimeters isn't always wide enough. Now, this shot was taken from really close to HMS Belfast, and it's actually a composite you can see that it's a pano, it's 11,000 pixels horizontally, so it was taken with about five different images and merged together in Lightroom. So that's another thing that I would say, if, if, you, if you find that you need a wider lens than 24, then often it is suitable just to shoot the image with a um, pano approach to it. And you can see really that the, the resolution on this is just absolutely fine. So this is a number of, of images stitched together using the 24 end of the zoom range. Overall, as I say, I found the lens quality to be absolutely excellent and to be pin sharp right out to the right out to the edges um, of the image. As you can see, it's still quite sharp right out to the very edges. Before we go on to some more street photographs that I took in London, I find this one particularly interesting. Someone was prepared to leave their camera on a tripod perched on the wall, just looking out to the Thames. So, um, I mean, this looks like a decent camera, but I certainly wouldn't put my camera on it and then walk away and be nowhere to be seen. Let's look at some other images. Shad Thames is right next to Tower Bridge and it's a great area for street photography. These bridges that run across from one side of Shad Thames to the other are uh, really quite iconic. Quick close up just to show that you can get right in close. So this was shot really close up of these um, coffee beans. More bridges on Shad Thames, some anchor chains along the way. Now, an interesting view can be had from just the first few steps into Shad Thames. You can go down onto this little area where you can look up on Tower Bridge from the side. And if you want to get a wide angle shot there, again, I decided to use the pano approach to it. So you can get wider than the 24 millimeters and get a really nice pano. So a final image just to show that um, the camera's balance is great and you can do a super pan. And this shows that Londoners don't waste much time getting home at the end of the day. So I hope that you enjoyed that review of the lens. I've only had it for a few days. I think it's it's great. Um, I'll be doing an event shoot next week. And um, I just wonder, will I miss the ability to shoot at the 70 millimeter end of the 24 to 70 G Master? I hope you enjoyed this short review of the 24 to 50 G lens. If you did please give the video a like. It really will help the channel. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.